In the fall of 67, I started my new college. I was a proud member of the class of 69. The old school was a Dominican college with monks in long white robes, lecturing rooms full of boys in sports coats and ties. Later they would test us on how well we could repeat what they had said. At this new seminar school, we read and debated Marcuse and Freud, Soul on Ice and Fahrenheit 451. Instead of boys in ties, they were worldly wise guys with long hair and flashy jewelry, along with intellectual girls not wearing bras. I wish I could communicate all of that, any of that. I wish I could remember it. I know everything shifted at the beginning of October. That's when Linda Fitzpatrick was murdered in the East Village, blocks from where I lived. It's one of the markers of my life. Her and her man for the night, Groovy, were beaten to death with bricks by two African-American men. It seemed to end the whole hippie myth of unity. Blacks, whites, rich, poor. Even more the confidence that you could take chances. Buck the system. Fuck the system. If you did, you could end up like this. It scared me, which is what it was supposed to do. News as propaganda, as modern day morality play. The media wrote endless stories about Linda, a rich, white, 18-year-old from Connecticut. Her father was a wealthy importer. Her mother, a former Powers model. Many of the articles mentioned Linda wasn't as attractive as her mother. Linda attended the Greenwich Country Day School. Friends said she was a quiet teenager who spent much of her time drawing pictures, including comic greeting cards for her family. Her parents said she was totally normal, but they had no idea how she spent her time in New York. One article in the New York Times titled The Two Worlds of Linda Fitzpatrick won the Pulitzer Prize, detailing how this girl who had it all opted to shed it in search of excitement. The director, Miles Foreman, wanted to make a movie about Linda, but no studio would back him with money. Instead, they paid him to do hair. Groovy, the guy who was killed with Linda, got some attention too. He was a 21-year-old working-class dropout from Rhode Island, a street hippie. He knew everyone in the East Village. One uncle called him the Huck Finn of his generation, a psychedelic prankster. At his funeral, a friend said Groovy always wanted to be the leader of the laughers. <laughs> Groovy was best friends with Galahad, the most media-promoted hippie in the East Village. Both the Times and Newsweek did stories on him. Together, Groovy and Galahad were notorious for giving out free drugs. They ran an open crash pad on 11th Street. Anybody could stay there. There was hardly anything written about the two murderers, Donald Ramsey and Thomas Dennis. At the time, I didn't care. The entire event seemed appropriately appropriated into a story about Linda, the golden girl, who, like Dorothy and Oz, had sought adventure in a new dimension, only to end up naked in a dingy urban basement with her head bashed in, bricked in. The media used Linda's death to proclaim the death of the entire era, which didn't please me. I'd arrived late for the party. It was now being told it was over. <laughs>